And they have this idea in marketing called moments of truth. So this is an example of a moment of truth. So this is a, um, so imagine this, this is, uh, you're on uh, Japanese Airlines and she, he's the steward. I mean, he doesn't look Japanese, but uh, he's the steward and she's the passenger. And he's just poured accidentally hot coffee on her lap, right? All on her, all on her nice skirt, hot coffee, stain it, and she's very angry. So she's standing up and she's complaining to the steward, right? Now this, in marketing terms, is called a moment of truth. And moments of truth are very interesting because they are not what you might believe. You might believe that she, because she's had coffee poured on her lap, will never want to fly Japanese airlines ever again. But that's not the case. It depends what he does. If he responds correctly, she will never want to fly on any other airline other than Japanese airlines ever again. But if he responds incorrectly, then she's gone. You know, she's on British Airways or Anna or whatever. And this is a moment of truth. And it's how you deal with things when they go wrong. That's the really critical thing. And of course, airlines, you know what happens when something goes wrong on an airline. You know, if your television doesn't work or your seat doesn't recline, they say, I'm terribly sorry. That's the first thing they do. They apologize. I'm terribly sorry for that. What can we do? You know, let me, let me, find, let me take you to business class. You know, let me give you a bottle of champagne. You know, and if they manage it well, they will never want to fly on any other airline. So when things go wrong, uh, we, were, we were making this mistake. Things would go wrong and I think, oh, that's it. There's no point working, you know. Drugs have been held in customs in Nigeria for two months and they're really getting angry. Oh, we're not going to do much in Nigeria. But if you handle it well, it can be a great success. Now, we were talking about moments of truth and then we got a very big moment of truth. This, was the, this is the writing committee of the Crash 2 trial. So the, we, all of the national coordinators of all of the countries of the world come to the London School of Hygiene and we sit around for two days and we draft the paper together. Now, um, so this, is, this was on the last day, all of, you know, this, this guy from Egypt and... Uh, Peru and India and Colombia, Spain, everywhere. People, they're all, all, all there in London for this meeting. And we, we worked on this manuscript for two days and then we said, right, bye-bye, everybody. Um, and they all went off to the airport and we said, that was exhausting. You know, looking after people is very tiring. Um, and so um, we said, you know, bye-bye, off, off you go. And they all went off to Heathrow Airport and then they all started coming back because this volcano erupted in Iceland and uh, it put out ash into the atmosphere and the airspace around Britain was closed for a week and nobody could fly anywhere. So they all came back. Um, this guy, he rang the trial administrator. He, he, he's um, uh, Jorge Castellano from Peru. Uh, national coordinator and he only speaks Spanish and he phoned up the trial administrator at six o'clock in the morning from Heathrow and he only said three words he said Jorge Heathrow help and the trial administrator went out to find him uh, went out to meet him at Heathrow airport and she brought him back brought him home to her home and we said right guys this is it this is our moment of truth we've got to We've got to handle this well, otherwise it will be a disaster. So we turned our office, um, we turned the, the trial, we turned the clinical trials unit into a travel agents, basically. The, tra the, the, the clinical trials unit became a travel agency. Um, we had to book them on new flights. We had to, we had to go down to the embassies and uh, extend their visas. We had to put them in hotels. Uh, it cost us 10,000 pounds, we didn't have, but we had to do it. 
Uh, some, some, uh, some of the staff took them to their homes. Uh, so um, I think Lynn, this is Lynn, she's the data manager, and she took uh, Jorge, home, Jorge home to her, her house, and you know, they had a Spanish dictionary on the table and eating breakfast. And so this was our moment of truth. We tried to handle it really well. And it seemed people were very happy when they left. They knew that something bad had gone wrong. They knew it wasn't our fault. You know, the volcano is a volcano. But these people were the first to take part in the Crash 3 trial. They were, you know, they, they, they were, they, we, we could, tr you know, they really started off the Crash 3 trial really well because, because we'd built a We'd built trust with them. It was, it was all about, it's all about trust. Then we have um, things like newsletters. This isn't a really, this isn't a very good example of a newsletter, um, but um, it, I can tell, uh, you know, all clinical trials have newsletters, and you can tell, I can tell if a trial's going to fail by looking at the newsletter. If the newsletter has a picture of the chief investigator at a conference, it's not going to do well. The, you know, people don't want to see the chief investigator at a conference. It, 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 what people look at when they look at our newsletters, because I've watched them, they want to see a picture of themselves. And so, they should, we, we have newsletters with as many pictures of the collaborators as possible. And when, they, and when people pick up a newsletter, they look for their name. So we have lots of names. You know, all, all of these are names of people who have done, you know, who have started recruitment, who have got new ethics approvals, who have done special achievements. So we really celebrate the collaborators. And then, and then we think about, how, about the sorts of people that we're employing. So people who work with data, uh, right? So the, these are data managers. And data managers, data manage, managing data is, is quite, you know, it's, you have to have attention to detail. You know, you, you have to, you know, you have, we want complete data, accurate data. So it's easy to choose people who are very quite sort of um, I think if I said autistic that would be too strong but people who are very uh, focused on detail but to start with in our trials we used to focus we used to employ people like that and it didn't work they weren't the right people because what we found is that the people who receive the data from the collaborators are the face of the trial to the collaborators so actually, what we want is people who can build relationships. So actually, you know, so this is, this is Lynn, uh, who I showed you in the previous slide. This is an example of one of her correspondences, one of her email messages to uh, one of the collaborators to, you know, to, to improve the accuracy of the data. Lovely to hear from you. We're freezing here in London, only 15 degrees. Thank you for sending all of these new entries. Um, I, I hope you have a perfect... And Lynn was a genius at this because all of these collaborators that she was receiving data from, she seemed to remember the names of their children, uh, you know, the, what was going on in their lives. She just built relationships with them. And what we find is actually these big trials, they're all about relationships. They're all about, um, yeah, they're just relationships are what, what, make, what make them work, really. And so you, peop, having people who are good at building relationships with people was the key. And then when you get a result, you must not take the credit for it, you know. Uh, you, you know we, we know in the office we must not take the credit for it. And so these, I mean, this is me, um, but we make sure that lots of other people talk about the trial results. You know, so the, the, um, 
This is a, the woman trial, a big trial funded by the Gates Foundation, uh, 20,000 patients with uh, postpartum hemorrhage. And we found that th this drug that I've, I was talking about yesterday, tranexamic acid, reduces the risk of death. And so we, we've got collaborators from, this is uh, Professor Chowdhury from Pakistan speaking on the BBC, Professor Bukola Fuole speaking on the television in Nigeria. You know, just share, share it all out, you know? And, and it works, and everything works so much better. And that's how you can build, you can build things that are special. I, I, I feel I've got an analogy between randomized trials. I think there's no such thing as a high quality small trial. Because random error is an error. You know? And so you can't have high quality small. You know, it has to be random error. Systematic error has to be minimized, and random error has to be minimized. Systematic error is minimized by, ha by having proper allocation concealment, loss, minimal loss to follow-up, you know, statistical analysis plans, you know, no data-dependent analyses. But random error is, er is error too, and you have to minimize that by having large numbers. And to get large, and so a small trial is like, you know, it's like a small, you know, like a small structure, small building. But what we want to build are cathedrals, I think. We want to build something special. We're trying to build cathedrals. And, um, and, I, and that's, that's what I spend most of my time doing now. I, when, I was, when I started doing research, I wrote lots of papers. And um, nobody read them. My mother did to start with, but then even, even she stopped reading after a, after a while. But so I, I sort of really changed my policy with research. I said, right, I'm not going to do lots of little things. I'm just going to do one thing, you know, have one big, big result every every five or ten years even. So my university treats me like I'm a battery hen. It, teaches all, it, use, teach, uh, it, it, it treats all of the academics like, they're, like you're a hen, and you have to lay these eggs for the university. And these eggs are grants and papers. And you, know, you have all of these academics in their boxes laying grants and papers for the university. I'm still a battery hen, but I just lay one big egg every 10 years. Um, I, I've stopped laying lots of little eggs. And that's it, really. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> it's a bit of a strange lecture. <laughs> but any questions about it? <laughs> Masafumi. A small question. You talk, you ask people in the country to make presentation by themselves. But the people is sometimes wrong for bad presentation. So did you help them to make good presentation? Generally, the Generally, they don't. They, you know, we have a protocol, and uh, when people uh, are required to present, when they're presenting it, they read it very carefully. They read it much more carefully than if you're telling them about it. They, because they think, right, I'm going to have to present this trial. I'm going to, I'm going to read. And if, if of course they said something that we, th that was, you know, if they made a, a, a mistake. We'd say, well, actually, no, that's not quite right, you know. It, you know, but we we would ex we would explain what what we meant, you know. We'd say, well, maybe we didn't make this very clear in the protocol, but what we mean by this is this. Um, so, you know. But they learn much more uh, 
um, from presenting it to you than, than from you present, you know, than from listening to you present to them. Yeah. Professor. Yes, so uh, the most important thing, the money. The money. <laughs> Okay, so the, the, the <coughs> unfortunately it's getting more expensive to do the same thing. Um, so the first crash trial cost um, about a million pounds. Now, uh, so we randomized 10,000 patients for a million pounds. I think a million pounds is, I don't know, someone's going to, it's something Okuen but I'm not sure how many okuen it is. Ni okuen. It's about, yeah. Tabun ni okuen. It depends on the exchange rate. Ex exchange rate. It's getting cheaper in terms of pound these days, I think. Well, no, that, the weak pound is a problem for our trials because actually um, everything we have to pay for in different countries is, is more expensive. So don't you make any Yeah, the but uh, when you get the uh, all data from every all of the local uh, authority, then uh, maybe to as, as you said, uh, you have you want to minimize uh, uh, stochastic uh, factor, and also that you want to uh, minimize uh, uh, like, uh, samples. Yeah. So how do you all of these sites are following one protocol and they're collecting the identical data in the same way. And we don't ask them to collect a lot of data. So rather than randomizing 20 patients and having 20 pages of an outcome measure, we would prefer to randomize 20,000 patients and have a single side of outcome measure. People. People collect, in general, far too much data. And so you have to have the courage to just collect a small amount of data, but the data that will, is needed to answer your question. So in our, in, our, in our trauma trials, it's very easy because the, the, the outcome that matters is very easy to measure, and it's death. So, you know, and people never get it wrong. I mean, we go to sites and we check and we look at the notes and we look at the, what's on the outcome form, and it's and it's very accurate. So maybe the uh, end point is just differentiate uh, this or not. That no, we we have death and adverse effects, you know, heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, and operations. But you can get it on a single side of A4. The, the very and even things like you know disability. You know, we, but simple questions on disability, you know, can you wash yourself, can you feed yourself, can you, can you go to the shops, you know, and these can be very simple outcome measures, but you collect them on lots of patients. But, um, yeah. Yeah. The, the um, we, we go multi-center because y you can recruit faster because you, there are more patients. The, the, the thing about the world is no, there's no shortage of sick people in the world, right? There, and so, you know, head injuries, um, you know, Internationally, like it, the rate of head injuries in, say, India, Pakistan, China is much higher than it would be in, 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 J in Japan or, or the UK. So going to, these, going to countries where the problem is very common makes a lot of sense. And about heterogeneity, it's interesting that in all of the trials we've done so far, we find 
no heterogeneity by country. So the, um, and it's the heterogeneity in the treatment effect. So, it, you know, there is heterogeneity in the death rates. The risk of dying from trauma in uh, Nigeria is much higher than the risk of dying from trauma in the UK. But the effect of the treatment on mortality in Nigeria is exactly the same as it is in the UK. That, you know, when we, when, we, um, uh, when we do analysis stratified by country, everything is in a line. It's, 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 they're very nice in a way because these big trials are like individual patient data meta-analysis. They're like prospective individual patient data meta-analyses of like 400 trials with no missing data. So we can analyze the trial as, a, as if it was a meta-analysis and each center was, you know, was, a, a, was a, an, a small trial and you know, they're, they're all in the line and there's no significant heter heterogeneity.